What is going on everybody? Welcome to the third part of our programming for finance tutorial series. In the last part what we did was we started building our own algorithm here and I'll just run through it really quick. First you have the initialize method and basically this method and how this works is all the code that we put underneath this define with one tab over basically or at least one tab over will run as a part of this define initialize. Okay, so this initialize method, everything that's one tab or more over is a part of this until we define a new method. So th with the initialize method, this is a method that runs only one time. It's the initialization, right? Uh, and the only thing we're putting in there right now is we're just defining our the security that we're interested in trading. From there, we come down to handle data, and handle data runs once per iteration of time period. So since we're doing daily data right now, this runs once a day. And at once a day, it calculates what's the data, it calculates the moving average, and what's happening here is we're defining a new column, basically. Or actually, this would be a series. And it's a series based on the data data frame, which is a pandas object. So again, if you don't want to know more about pandas, I do have tutorials on pandas. Uh, but what's happening here is we're redefining and we're, we're just defining MA1 as equal to the data for the context.security, which is the spy, and we apply with dot a moving average of 50 to it. <clears throat> and then we do the exactly the same thing again, only with a 200 moving average. And then coming down here, we define just some, some basic variables that we're going to be using each step of the way. So with that, let's go ahead and create our actual algorithm now. So come on down, add another enter here. And what we want now is the actual logic for our algorithm. So the logic is, again, if the 50 crosses up above the 200, that signals that price is moving upward. And if it crosses below, that signals that price is moving downward. So what we can do is use an if statement. If you're not familiar with if statements, I have tutorials on those. I also have tutorials on the elif statement as well, so check those out if you're not familiar. But basically, they work as you would, as they sound. So you would, you ask the question if, and the question is if the MA1 is greater than the MA2, that means we want to invest, right? Well, not quite, because Basically, we want to we only want to trade at the point of crossover, and uh, we would only do that if we're already not invested. So we need another bit of logic here. So if this is the case and we're not already invested, we want to do something. So we'll add literally an and here. So if MA1 is greater than MA2 and our current underscore positions are equal to zero. So if we don't have a position, we're prepared to invest. So if all of this is the case, we'll hit enter, and then all the code here is contained within the if statement. First, we want to know how many shares are we going to buy? So like, how much can we afford? Well, as I was saying before, with these three variables defined, we can take cash divided by current price, and that's how many shares. So we can use number underscore of underscore shares and that's going to be equal to the integer value of cash divided by the current underscore price. So how much cash do we have divided by price? Convert it to an int because we can't buy fractions of shares here. Uh, and that's how many we're going to buy. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to call order. And what order does is allows us to place an order. Okay, And an order can be either a purchase or a sale. So order takes at least here two parameters. The first parameter we're going to pass is what do we want to order? Well, we want to order this context.security that we defined up here. So I'm going to copy that, paste, comma. So that's the first little parameter. The next parameter is going to be how many, right? So if you were going to buy 50 shares, you would put a 50 here or a plus 50. And if you want to sell, you're going to put a minus 50. And that would be to sell 50 shares. But we want to go ahead and buy whatever that number of shares is that we calculated. So we're just going to copy and paste that in there. Next, uh, I'll just show you how you can update this log. You can do something like this, log.info. And you can just add some info here. I'm just going to say buying shares. Okay, that's good enough. And it'll pop up in this log here. Or when we go to run the back test, we also had that like log user interface. It'll pop up there as well. So we've done that. Now, that's, a, that's to invest. But what about to, uh, let me come down here. What about if we need to sell? 
So then we're going to use the elif statement. Again, there's I have tutorials on elif, but basically the elif is the combination of else and if. So this question will only run if this question is false. So l if uh, m a one. So m a one is less than m a two. This means it's trending down, or at least it appears to us. If that's the case, and we want to make sure that we're invested. If we're not invested, we can't really do anything. So and current underscore positions. Uh, you could put not zero, but generally we're going to use an exclamation mark and an equal sign that denotes not equal to zero. So but this just means as long as we have more than, you know, or more than zero uh, stocks, then we, we have something to sell. So then what we could do is we could do the, the following. We could say order. And again, we could order this context.security that we defined up here as the spy. We could order context.security and then we could say we want to sell the negative amount of the current underscore positions. So that would sell all of our positions. But there's a, a little bit more of a Pythonic way to do this and you can use another command instead of order, this would work. But instead of order, we're going to do order underscore target. And what this does for us is allows us to set a goal, basically. And so in order target, again, we can use this context.security that we defined up here as the spy. And then we can set our target. We're going to say we want the target to be that we have zero shares. So we'll set that target. And then we'll go ahead and update the log. We'll say log.info. And then we'll say uh, selling shares. <clears throat> That's it for our algorithm. Now we, I want to add one more thing before we run that, and that's going to be this record, so or record. Uh, so record, and what goes into record is up to five, just anything that you want to track, and it will show it in that little GUI right underneath performance, basically. So the things that we want to record, you'll just define them as what the, what you want them to say, basically on the graph. So on the graph would be we want it to say MA1 because that's what it is, and we'll say literally MA1 is whatever the MA1 is, okay? So this is the graph name. This is the actual variable that it's representing. And then, let's add some spaces here. MA1 equals MA1. Then we're gonna say MA2 is equal to MA2. And then we're gonna say uh, price is equal to whatever that current price is right here that we defined. So I copy that and paste. And that's it. We've got the algorithm and we're tracking three out of the five things we can track. Let's go ahead and just hit save here. You can hit build algorithm here and it'll pop up here, but I want to run the full uh, back test. So uh, leave this as daily. If you want, you can change it to minute, but it's going to take a long time. So I'm just going to run the full back test on the daily data. So uh, in a moment, it'll begin and we'll get to see our algorithm versus the benchmark. And here we go. We're starting and you can see where we've made like here. You can see here in the, this custom data, that's the stuff we put into record. And uh, you can see here, that was the first crossover here where we sold. And you can see that our algorithm flatlines here. That's because we sold out, right? So our portfolio value is, is the same there. And then as we go on, we bought back in and we follow the S&P 500 because it keeps trending up. So we've held for the most part. I think we only made what, like three trades here. Um, yeah, so you can scroll down here and you can see here's a, a buy, a sell, and a buy. So we didn't really do a lot of trading, but at the end of the day, our total returns were 60.6 .6 compared to the 80% of the, the SPY, which again is the S&P 500 uh, Spider Index Fund. So uh, that's a basic algorithm. Again, the, that algorithm was, you know, the, the SMA crossover of the 50 over the 200. Um, so a simple algorithm, it didn't beat the market, but that was expected. The SMA crossovers are not really uh, anything special. So that's that. If you have any questions or comments about the algorithm, how we did anything, any confusion or anything like that, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll do my best to help you guys out. As we move forward, we'll be doing a lot more uh, complex strategies. So if you're already falling behind here, definitely want to solidify uh, your understanding before we move on. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.